Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for staying. It's very nice to meet all of you. Uh, at first, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Chen Ai Zhen. I'm a product management. Uh, I have uh, IT operation management over eight years. Uh, in my experience, uh, without automation, uh, the Operation work is a very hard job. So um, I like looking for ways to make my job is easy. Uh, automation can reduce a amount of my job. When it comes to automation tools, I believe that you have tried to use such as uh, uh, Puppet, Safe, or Ansible, and so on. Uh, whatever exactly you choose, Insist to use it well is the most important thing. Uh, so today I will share how to use Ansible in another way to make uh, it better. I, I hope my talk can bring you some new ideas. So let's get started. Uh, at first, I have a brief introduction of Ansible, but Ansible is not the main story today. Ansible is a faster than net communicator, was coined in the novel of Reckoner's World in 1966. The widely, then is widely used in science fiction. The famous one is Aiden's Game. Ansible is a fictional space, space, a hyperspace communication system in Aiden's Games that no matter how far it is, it can be sent immediately. Uh, I have saw this movie. This is uh, a very great for me. Uh, what is Ansible? The simplest implementation is uh, Ansible is automation tools. It has a lot of power, and it can do anything that you want to automate. The core of Ansible is to automation all the things right. Uh, we have, uh, uh, in, the, in the daily work, we have a lot of job to do, such as uh, application deployment, uh, data collection, uh, backup, and so on. We, we are using ba uh, batch script, basically, it's automatically, but uh, we have to write all the if conditions and handlings. So it's a little bit compli completed. Uh, with the growing up of the company, the, many, the node we manage it faced from dozens, hundreds, <coughs> thousands, tens of thousands. Of course, the workload is growing too. So we have to find a better way to solve this problem. We need something better, something more simple, more faster. After looking around, we choose Ansible. There have a couple of reasons. At first, Ansible is simple and easy, easy to install, easy to understand, and easy to use. It's very important to make the IT system sim as simple as possible. Um, the best thing we like Ansible is engineers. We don't have to install any new things in our machines. It means that it can save a lot of uh, agent maintenance job. The, uh, the next one is Python. Uh, when we do complex job, we will replace uh, batch script with uh, Python. We are familiar with Python, and uh, Ansible is right uh, by Python. So this is another reason why we choose. Um, I have said before that when we use batch scripts, we have to write all the con condition by ourselves. But playbook, uh, but in the playbook we just need to write the uh, correct argument. So we choose the Ansible. The another reason is the playbook is very easy to write. Um, Ansible is free and uh, open source. This is a very important reason for us. <coughs> oh. 
Okay, this graph on this slide is an overview of Ansible and uh, showing the relationship between all the parts of uh, Ansible. Um, let's start with the user who writes the playbook. <coughs> then the playbook will call in the models. Uh, the task writer in Ansible will be will be executed one by one uh, from the top to the bottom. The the host we manage the in the uh, we manage the will write in, write in the inventory. SSH is not the only is not the only connection type in Ansible. They have uh, uh, plugins to support other type of uh, connection. And uh, they have uh, uh, APIs to support uh, another, another interface. Uh, this is a very simple Ansible playbook example. Uh, we can see that, uh, this, that they only have one task to install uh, Docker. Mm. Playbook is writing in YAML and it's very, it's very easy to write and uh, read. Even you never used Ansible before, you still can use it. You still can understand what it's doing. That is very, very easy for us to use it. Uh, Ansible can control many nodes that at the same time, it look like uh, octopus that have a lot of tentacles. Earlier, we have a, a brief introduction of uh, Ansible, but it's not the story, the main story today. Uh, Ansible is a part of the story. Okay, there have some issues. There is no problem if we just use Ansible to do in the uh, simple work. But our experience shows that when Ansible used in a large scale experience, uh, a product environment, the native will have some problem. There have three problems we, we meet. According to our test result, the parent node by target node uh, number is limited, is uh, 300 to 500. We manage tens of thousands of nodes. Some nodes will need to wait. Or operate, or, or operate a amount of Ansible. Um, at the present, Ansible is a single point. When it uh, has failure, so the job will, will can't be executed. So um, we want Ansible can be, can be always available at least nine, at least three or four, nine or better. When the organization have many different groups of people doing different things, some people want to focus on develop operation application and don't want to focus on the Ansible's detail. So uh, how to provide an Ansible service for them? We wonder how to use Ansible is a user way, uh, is a easier way when they have multiple Ansible. So we designed a system to scale multiple Ansible, named Octop. In the movie War Stars, uh, Star Wars, they have a, a lovely rabbit named BB-8. It's impressive. So we hope this system would like BB-8. It's an AI robot, can be intelligent. This system has several goals. First, it can support more than 10,000 of nodes of concurrency execution, and the result of the execution can be transmitted and displayed. Second, with a function of high availability, when a failure happens, it also can finish the task in time, and any Ansible failure can recover quickly. Third, 
provide standards for interface to people in the organization so they can more focus on develop operation application, but don't need to care about uh, Ansible's detail. The graphic on this slide show the Octopus architecture. There have four parts. Next, I will explain the faction of each part. There have four parts. As the part of op op operational scenario, uh, is the, the SRE to develop their own operation application in the upper, such as install, back, uh, backup or, res or, or, or review resource, modify the configuration, and so on. Master, master is the body of of uh, Octobot, used to receive the request from operation applications and a skill multiple slave for task dis distribution and execution. Octobot slave is uh, Ansible, but it's not the traditional Ansible. We strengthen it, including change the core interface modes and the task execution inter, uh, ex execution information transfer mode and the user salary provide a distributed scaling function. Client. Client is the node that's managed by Ansible. It's the server we want to operate and uh, the task execution node. They have no change, it's the node we, we want to operate. Uh, the script in this uh, slide show how we build it. We can see there have uh, uh, operation applications, send and receive mode, rabbit MQ cluster, uh, schedule model, uh, to keep a cluster, and uh, uh, the, the Ansible and uh, client. And how, this, how does this work? There have eight steps. I have already marked the process. I will explain each step one by one. Step one, SRE develop their own operation applications, such as uh, view, view resource, uh, modify configuration, and so on. Through the send and receive model, provide a standard API interface to submit a task. task. When submit a task, the task's message will be created. Then the message will be put into RabbitMQ. The task's message contains target execution node, task details, and the task ID. The task ID is granted by send and receive mode. Step two. A scanning mode we are listening in RabbitMQ cluster after started. When the task message arrive, a uh, schedule model will get a message from the rapid MQ class and uh, pick out the number of uh, clients in the message. According to the number of clients in the message, schedule model determine how many slave we need. Suppose the number is M, then request all the available slave address from to keep a cluster. The client's address include the IP and the port. Then available client's address list will be returned from the Zookeeper cluster. The scheduling mode will choose M clients from this list. Step three, um, they have a sample. Uh, for example, suppose the Concurrency of each slave is uh, 400, but we have to execute a task in tens of thousands of nodes. So at least we need n nodes. And uh, to keep retained the available slave number is m. If m is great than or equal to m, means we got slaves more than we need. So we can select any slave as a reason from the list. 400 clients post leave. 
If n is less than n, means we don't have enough available slave we need. Then each slave will have to operate more than 400 clients. So some clients may need to wait, cannot be operated at the same time. Uh, this is the strength, uh, strength ensemble. Uh, we have uh, to introduction flask and uh, salary to the traditional ensemble. Um, first, because ansible execution task uh, is a time-consuming process, when it's running, the user can't do other operations at the same time. Be forced to wait. So here we use the salary to execute uh, a single task process. Second, uh, ansible does not provide a restful interface, so we wrap the ansible by Flask to provide a REST interface. Uh, how they work? Scanning mode have gained the task and the slave's IP and the port, and uh, the task execution node of each slave. Scanning mode send the task to Flask. Flask root infection will generate the salary ID and return it to scanning mode. The salary ID is a mark that can be used to confirm which slave executed the task. Then Flask root faction will call the generated faction of playbook to create a playbook in a YAML file. After the uh, Flask root faction will call salary according to the salary to call Ansible API to execute playbook. Um, in this system, playbook is generated by automatically. User don't have to write it by uh, itself. This code show how the playbook been created. By code the generated faction to create a playbook automatically. When the playbook is executing, the client will promote the task in the playbook using Ansible's traditional way. Generally, the result of execution will write to standard put our output or in a local file. But we are using RabbitMQ to communication, so we need to put the result of the execution to RabbitMQ. So we use Ansible's callback plugin to rebuild the callback interface. So Ansible supports to put, to put the result to RabbitMQ, then return the result, including the task result, task result statute, uh, salary ID, and so on. Operation application will receive the return result by listening, by, by listening the RabbitMQ cluster. We can use task ID and the salary ID to trace uh, execution node. Uh, we hope that Octobot have the capability to, of storing and starting quickly, so we run slave RabbitMQ uh, to keep a scanning mode in Docker. Docker is an amazing tool. I do love to use it. We initialize N node used for the initial task execution. Because this because this level run in Docker, when the slave started, it will register in ZooKeeper. So ZooKeeper will have all available slave information. So when we need the more slave, we just uh, start a new more Docker very quickly. And the, the, the start of Docker will register into Keeper. OK, the, the, all the steps I have uh, explained, now we can review all the steps. At first, slave run in Docker will register into Keeper after started. The ZooKeeper will have all the available slave information. 
then the operation application submits a task. The task information will be sent to Rabbit's MQ. Scanning mode will get the task information from Rabbit's MQ and get the available slave information from Zookeeper. Then scanning mode sends the task to slave. Slave will create playbook and execute it. Then client will perform the task in the playbook. Okay, okay, that is all I have to say today. I'm so glad to be here to learn and share with you. Have a good day. Thanks. <laughs>